Ever since I did the video about 34 minute flight times with this GEP RC Crocodile 7, I've had so many questions about how I set it up with the TBS Crossfire Nano Receiver. So I'll get the hood up on this and show you how I did it. It's pretty straightforward, but requires a bit of head scratching and some problem solving. Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. This GEP RC Crocodile 7 inch long range quad is fantastically relaxing to fly. It's a very different quad to what you may be used to and has given me a total change of mindset on FPV. Now, fitting a TBS Crossfire Nano receiver to this makes complete sense if you plan to do it any long range. But there's a problem. This GEP Span Pro F4 50 amp tower is great but it's only got three UARTs and it's really been designed to use an S-Bus receiver. So there's one inverted UART for an S-Bus, one for IRC Tramp Smart Audio to switch VTX channels and power settings, and the third one is for the BN220 Dual GPS GLONASS module. And because Crossfire requires a non-inverted UART and it can't use the inverted UART that's intended for S-Bus, it means sacrificing either the Smart Audio or the GPS UART. Now, you might think you could use the Smart Audio pins on the TBS Nano, but on this flight stack everything is tightly integrated and getting to the Smart Audio pin will be a mission. If we had a separate VTX it would be no problem. You might also think about using a soft serial port for the Smart Audio, but there simply aren't enough physical I.O. pins to use. So the only solution, other than completely swapping this stack for something else, is to sacrifice something. And because I wanted this for long range, I wanted to keep the GPS, which means the Smart Audio's just got to go. It just means to change VTX channels and power settings, I need to use the button on the top of the stack. But when I fly long range, I tend to be out on my own in the middle of nowhere, so I don't need to switch channels very often. To answer all the questions, let's have a quick look at how I wired this up, and then I'll show you how I configured it in beta flight. Now, the GPS module is wired to UART TX1. So if we have a look here, let's take that off a second. So this is the GPS GLONASS module, and this is connected to UART1 which are these two pins here that are marked T1 and R1. So the green wire is going to T1 and the white wire is going to R1. And the power for this is being picked up off these two pads on the bottom of the flight controller. And this is how it's wired up by GEP RC in the factory. So there's nothing to do here and we won't change any of that. UART 6, which is marked T6 and R6, is the inverted one for an S-Bus receiver. These pins you could actually solder a XM Plus or similar receiver onto there if you wanted to. But those connections are also available on this JST header here. So you can just use a four-way connector to wire an S-Bus receiver because on this connector here we've got 5 volts ground, S-Bus and 3.3 volts for a spectrum receiver if you're using one of those. But we don't need this. And up here is UART3. These are in a really wacky order. And this is the one that they've used for smart audio. So I've wired this to the Crossfire Nano receiver which is down here. So if you look carefully we've got the RX, which is the yellow wire, going to pin output one, sorry, on the nano, and the white wire, which is the TX, is going to the second pin, pin two on the nano receiver. And for power on here, because conveniently this JST supplied five volts ground, S bus, and 3.3 volts. The right two connectors are actually 5 volts and ground. So I've just hooked up a simple JST 
connector on the top two pins there and that goes to the two pins directly on the Crossfire Nano. And I'll leave a link to the GEP RC manual in the description down here so you can see all the details. Now the Immortal antenna is mounted at the front on a 3D printed bracket that I designed and the cable just passes through the frame here and I put a piece of foam it was a foam landing pad to protect it a bit and I'll leave a link to the STL files for these brackets in the description now the idea of mounting the antenna like this is for long range you need to keep the antenna as far away from carbon fiber as you can or it sort of detunes the antenna and interferes with reception and to get the full range from the system both your transmitter and receiver antennas should be parallel to each other. So mounting on the front like this is great when it's flying directly away or towards you if the transmitter antenna is horizontal. Obviously if you're turning or doing some macro it's not so perfect but this is a good compromise for long range. Also when it's pitched down in forward flight there'll always be a direct path back to the transmitter whether you're flying away from you or back towards you. If you mount it on the back the battery in the GoPro might interfere a bit. It's all a compromise really and I haven't done any proper tests on this but it works for me. So let's have a quick look at how I configure this in beta flight. Let's connect to the quad and the first place we'll look is in ports. Now this is the USB connection don't mess with that. UART1 is the UART that was in the factory connected to GPS and you can see that's already configured to GPS which is fine. UART3 is the inverted UART which was for the Serial RX which is for SBUS but we're not using that doesn't matter whether that's turned on or off to be honest and UART6 was the UART which was being used for smart audio and that will come configured with IRC Tramp but I've disabled that. Don't forget to save and reboot when you change that. Quick look at the configuration and this is where the good stuff happens. The only thing you'll need to change is the receiver. The receiver mode is serial based receiver but the provider is CRSF, that's Crossfire as opposed to SBUS. So just change that to CRSF and it will pick up UART6 fine. GPS should come factory configured but you just turn it on here, set it to U blocks and set it to auto config and that's all you need to do very simple have a quick look at GPS what have we got here well it's trying to work but we're indoors so it's not getting a signal we're going to get no satellites in here I hope that's answered all your questions to be honest this is pretty typical of the sort of problems that you'll need to solve when you build or modify a quad as always thanks for watching and if you found that useful give me a thumbs up and leave a comment and if it's your first visit then please do the subscribey belly thing up here to get notified when I post new content. I'll see you next time.